So in regard to the treatment of patients with idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, we have additional recent data that show us that the existing treatment uh, are safe and effective. And uh, it's important to know also that there are emerging uh, new data from basically from phase two data, which are additionally uh, putting confidence on the potential for new drugs to become available in the future. In particular, recently, there have been published data on the pentraxin 2 um, drug that has been completing the phase two. And we have data now on the open label extension study which is showing that uh, after the six months of randomized placebo control uh, treatment, um, safety is still uh, good, uh, which is the most important part. And there is a, some signal or suggestion of a sustained uh, treatment effect. So this is very promising in light of the phase three uh, studies that will be upcoming with this drug. And we had additional data in IPF that also it's important to treat the palliation part of this patient because they are very sick and we know that we don't have any standard of care for these patients and we know that this is going to be supporting care one of the big hits that we need to take care of in the next few years. So there's some uh, an exciting new device and it is using pulsed nitric oxide that's bled into oxygen therapy uh, in the in their um, doing a series of, of studies that are embedded I, I believe they're calling it phase 2b on to phase 3 but what was presented um, in, in terms of initial data was their first cohort, which was a group of um, IPF patients. Actually, not just IPF, it was enriched um, with other disease populations as well, IPF, chronic HP, NSIP, and those were, they chose patients who, um, the majority of which had echocardiographic suggestion of pulmonary hypertension, so more severe patients um, who were already using oxygen therapy, and they did an eight-week study, randomized people to either stay on their normal oxygen therapy or use this novel device that had uh, pulse nitric oxide bled at 30 parts per million bled into oxygen, and then they followed the two groups out. And what they saw, and, and this was a kind of a cool study because a lot of the studies had been predicated on six minute walk. And we know that that's really uh, important, but it is just a snapshot in time. So they used an activity monitor um, that was worn like a watch to, um, to track their level of fit, physical activity over the eight week period. And the uh, day, the 24 hours in the day were divided up into sedentary, which would include sleep and rest, uh, light physical activity, moderate, and then vigorous. And so what they uh, saw over the eight week time period is for those who were wearing uh, the nitric oxide device compared to regular oxygen, that the percentage of time they spent during the day in the moderate uh, uh, level of physical activity increased. Uh, the vigorous would be defined by activities such as running and heavy, heavy exercise. The majority of these patients who were pretty sick, I think the uh, forced vital capacity went all the way down to 40% and higher. They were not spending a lot of time in this section, but, uh, but the moderate physical activity, those wearing the device uh, increased their uh, percentage of, of time. And they also looked at six minute walk distance, uh, nadir oxygen saturation on the six minute walk and some other parameters. And there was not as clear of a signal um, in those, in those um, parameters, but the um, activity monitor, which is kind of a novel concept, um, did show, did show um, a change. And so I think that's kind of provocative. It may be showing us that the future of some of these uh, interventions, how to test them would be more of a um, uh, continuous read on our activity rather than just performance on a six minute, uh, a six minute test. But all of these patients have now um, rolled into open label extension. And so we'll get more data going into the future and they're enrolling their cohort two and then there'll be a cohort three. And I think we'll um, hear more in the future about this potential uh, novel device as well as the use of activity monitors. <laughs>